Pat Wheeler here. Here. All righty. Bob Blair here. And also our new COA director, Victoria Flynn. Here? Here. Here. <laughs> Actually, you're there. Um, all right. And we have with us also Margaret, the town administrator. That's me. Hello. Hello, Margaret. So uh, next order of business is uh, to vote to accept or decline or modify the minutes of the COA meetings held on uh, 614 and also 630. I think you all got a copy of that, of those. Any corrections, any reluctance to accept or may we accept those? Here a motion to accept. Yeah. No motion to accept? Okay, I'm just gonna have to burn them. Can I have a motion to accept? I'll make a motion to accept the minutes. <laughs> All right. Second? Second. Moved and seconded to accept the minutes of the last two COA meetings as submitted by Karen. Um, so voted. Do we have financial updates available? Fiscal year 21 account balances, payroll expenses since the last meeting, uh, information on the fiscal year 20 work off program and status of fiscal year 21, and payroll for council on aging. That would be Tate, correct? Sorry, I was just making a note here. What would you like me to read? Do we have information on the account balances? I don't actually have all of the account balances. I just signed things that Peggy brings to me, but I don't okay. have a is, record of those. Is Peggy with us today? Peggy Sardell, are you there? Are you hiding? Peggy's on mute. She's on mute. Unmute thyself, Peggy. So is Margaret. Looks Am like she's muted. Now you are. Oh, I heard. Are you? Are, yeah. Well, I forwarded the balances to Victoria. Do you want to read them, or you want me to? Hello. I would. If you want to read them, um, Peggy, go ahead. Let me just find your email. Okay. The expense. Oh, Donations is five thousand four hundred and twenty-two forty-five. Count on aging expenses is twelve thousand six hundred and twenty-five. Count on aging part-time wages twenty-four thousand one hundred and sixty-five dollars. And count on aging part-time wages director is twenty-one thousand and thirty-two dollars. Essentially, there hasn't been anything spent at either of those accounts this year, except for Victoria's wages. Through the, through the chair and Peggy. <laughs> um, I just wanted to let you know that at the Finance Committee's last meeting, I did notify, um, I did notify them um, of the adjustment to um, the Council on Aging Directors hourly wages for FY21 and notified them that the additional funds required to fund the, um, the budget, the, um, her wages uh, for the full year would be $3,281.65. So FinCom has been given a heads up. Um, so they will be prepared when the time comes to, uh, to put this through. Okay. How does that affect either what we have in our piggy bank or what we're appropriated for the year, or is that just added to? The appropriation for the year is insufficient. So that 328165 needs to be added to the Council on Aging Directors appropriation. Um, and that is a market rate adjustment um, that we've informed uh, FinCom uh, needs to happen. Um, this was supported by both the personnel committee and the select board. How will okay. that happen, Margaret? 
It's got to happen. So there is a, a what we call a contingency line in the FY21 operating budget. That contingency line contains a certain amount of funds for market rate adjustments to certain positions in this in this current fiscal year. And so the finance committee and the select board will have to vote to appropriate those funds from contingency to fund um, the uh, adjustment in that wage line. Okay. All right. Uh, do we have a motion to accept the financial updates as presented? I'll make a motion to accept the financial updates as presented. Do we have a second? I second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, I think I'm actually supposed to read the uh, Lori Fairbay, not here. Uh, Kate Bliss? Aye. Lori just showed up, guys. You did, okay. Karen Schultz? Aye. Pat Wheeler? Aye. Bob Blair? Aye. And Lori Fairbay? Aye. Thank you. Uh, it's unanimous vote to accept mm -hmm. the financial information as presented. Item three on the list is uh, regards the van, uh, concerns the van. Um, do we have a, a date at this point on when the van resumes service? All right, so at this point, um, we have hired a second driver. Um, she is in the process of getting her quarry cleared and getting the driving record um, so we can have her start. We were supposed to have the CPR AEP first aid training today. Um, it wound up getting pushed to next week. So um, myself and the drivers will be doing that next week. Um, so we're hoping that as long as the paperwork clears um, for driver number two, that we can get the van service up and running. Um, I don't know if next week would be doable, but probably the week after at this point. So we're talking mid-August. The second week. So that would be what, like the 10th, the week of the 10th? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I hope that's so. Because I know. Yeah. We're getting a lot of anyway. Help. Uh, so we have hired an additional driver. Was there any more conversation with the person from where was it who had a driver who wanted more hours and was willing to be a sub? So I emailed, I believe it was Sterling. So I emailed their um, director and I said, please pass on, you know, we would certainly be willing to talk to you if you needed, if they wanted more hours or were still interested, but I never heard back. Okay. I'm not sure that was Sterling. That would have been uh, Alex. Oh, it was Lancaster. Okay. Oh, well, I'm sorry. That, yep, you're probably right. I'm thinking, why did I think that? Yeah, Alex is Lancaster. So probably Sterling is correct. All right. So there's a possibility that that's a spare driver Yes. at some point. Uh, what happens with that, uh, Margaret, I would ask, um, if we have somebody who has been vetted and is an operating driver for another Council on Aging in a nearby town. Um, do we put that, per if that person is willing to work on call for us, does that person go through all of the same procedures that a new hire would here? Yes, that is correct, because the person would be an employee of the town of Berlin, so would have to meet town the town of Berlin standards. Now, yeah. it, it is possible that the employee who's employed in another um, municipality has a copy of their driving record, for example. So maybe there is something or things that they can bring with them, but they will be the same, they will be subject to the same medical um, and quarry requirements and things that our other employees are. Okay. Um, even if they're past the quarry where they're working now? That is correct. Okay. Different municipality. Yep. Uh, let's see, van driver. And do we have in hand now the van driver policies and schedules of drivers? I know what schedules. Yeah, is there a form that we're using for scheduling drivers now? So that is something that I am working on. Um, my hope is that, you know, we, it looks like at this point that um, our original driver is still confirmed to do Monday, Wednesday, Fridays, and the second driver can do Tuesday, Thursdays. So that's, that's good. And they've um, they were both talking earlier about you know subbing in for each other if needed. Um, so what I'll do is I will work on um, just updating the policies and procedures that we have in place, you know, just to accommodate for COVID and the additional protocols we're going to need. 
Okay, and uh, in this CPR AED training that's occurring now next week, um, <clears throat> is that where is where fits in the actual training on the on the vehicle itself? Um, at this point, what we're going to do is I know Chief Clark was uh, looking into getting like a waterproof bag for the first aid kit to then attach it to the uh, van itself. And the AED that we're going to use is the one that is de designated for the van. It hasn't been taken out of its box yet or anything. So the hope is that when we're getting the AED training for it, that uh, whoever is doing the training, you know, that the drivers will know how to use the exact equipment that are going to be on the on the van. Okay, but I'm referring that that part's understood um, with reference to actually operating the equipment in the van. How how are we going to proceed on that? Who uh, I said I could call a person from the most. I would. Work, so. Yeah, I would see uh, Bob if you can give me uh, that information. I think that that would be something that if we could schedule it, you know, even if it's for next week or um, you know, you know, before the ladies start driving the new van. Yeah, that would be good. Just so they can well, get a better idea. Yeah, it'd be critical actually because they can't. If somebody is in a wheelchair, they need to know how to strap them in, and also the movement of the seats and all of that sort of stuff. Right. Okay, I will do that. I will give you that information, and then you can be in touch with her directly. And also, I'm happy to loan, uh, loan my uh, extensive library of filmed. Uh, van operational stuff that Margaret and the chief and the sergeant and I all witnessed so uh, that's right you have the training video you have the training were, video they were actually <laughs> requesting it earlier I was talking to them and they were both they were both very interested in seeing the video just to have it as another reference okay I just I just wanted to uh, make sure that I'm a I'm a correctly my name is spelled correctly in the uh, subtitle <laughs> 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 all right, so that's all good. It sounds like the van is something that's going to happen sooner than later, yes. which is excellent. Um, can I, excuse me, through the chair, um, I just want to make it clear that today's training was scheduled and due to a conflict um, in the fire department's schedule, they couldn't conduct the training. So both of our drivers were there, Victoria was there, but the trainer uh, wasn't there. So I just want to make that clear. Oh. Darn fire people, they're always running <laughs> off doing something. All right, so next week, that's good. Um, just so everybody's trained properly, has the right equipment, knows how to unhitch the seats and hitch them and make sure that they're solidly rooted in the floor of the van and so forth. What's, uh, just as a sm another small aside, what's happening with the decals that go on the back windows? They are on, sir. Woo! Somebody gave you a spray bottle or how did that work? Or was that highway? Well, no, it was uh, Margaret, Mary and I on Friday afternoon. We spent about 45 minutes getting them on. So and it's a real, Yay. it's a real amateur job. And honestly, I mean, you can see them. They look good from a distance. Just stand back. Um, <laughs> the squeegee they gave us for decals that were 24 inches high was about this big. Oh, yeah. So it really, it wasn't ideal, but we did our best. And this was the squeegee we got. That's the squeegee. <laughs> <laughs> just, just this one thing. And it's good. For something like a window pane in the house, that might have been the right size. Yeah. So actually, one of our uh, new drivers is an artist, and she actually has like a bigger squeegee at home. So she said she was going to bring it next week. So we can try to see if we can level out some of the bubbles that are on. The <laughs> oh, she cool. can work on those bubbles in between driving. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Life, in a, life in a bubble. Yeah. Um, is it when you're sitting in the back inside, you are able to see through those, right? Because yes. that was one of the, that's yeah, one of the reasons we got the perforated ones. Yeah. Yeah. How does, I don't quite get how that works. When you're trying to squeegee the thing flat, and you get all these perforations. How does? Well, does we we got part of the decals pretty flat. There's just bits of it that aren't. So yeah, that will be remedied. They can be peeled off. That's yes. a good thing. Yeah. All right. Good work, ladies. <laughs> uh, let me see. What did we have? Oh, tai chi and yoga classes. What's the situation there now? 
So I wanted to let uh, the council know that we did reach out to both the yoga instructor and the Tai Chi, tai chi instructor. They are both very uh, willing and eager to come back if the council feels that it is appropriate to do so. Um, the question that they had that I had that I wanted to pose to all of you is just if we wanted to resume classes and how would we like to resume classes? Um, doing it indoors versus outdoors, having something that could be virtual, um, just, just questions that I think everybody had. So I wanted to pose it to the council. I wonder, uh, just off the top of my head, is it not possible to do both where you have it either indoors or outdoors, but also for people who don't feel comfortable coming to it, that it could be filmed by cable, town cable, and made available that way. Yeah, that was that was my thought. I did reach out to cable access. I'm going to follow <clears throat> up with them to see how much head time they need to yeah. um, get their equipment going and just to see um, if that's something that we can schedule. I know Jeffrey, who's doing the Tai Chi, said that he has his own um, YouTube channel and has his own links that he's broadcasting anyway. So we can see, um, you know, and again, he, he sounded open to being recorded for the sessions if needed. So, um, but again, just stuff I wanted to bring to the council. And that was Tai Chi or was that yoga? Tai Chi. Um, tai Chi. But, uh, but the yoga instructor was also like very <coughs> too about making sure that we keep this as safe as possible. Yeah, my understanding was that uh, cable people are interested in doing more and uh, this might be a very helpful way for them not only to do more but to make safe participation in these two programs anything anybody else have or either victoria or anyone else have any other ideas for additional activities that might fit into the same sort of scenario that was yeah, I think that um, something else I, I put it, we had put into the agenda was also talking to about, do you, are you, is the council open to having like information sessions or like little tutorials or things like that through cable access to help our seniors be better used to our technology, different apps or different information sessions that as you know, the summer into fall progresses that you guys may think would be um, a good resource for our for our residents. Sounds like a all board members. Yeah, no, it sounds like a good idea. <clears throat> I agree. Sounds good. Yeah. Good yeah. Idea. Okay. I had yeah. reached out. Um, I went out to to see Jody at Wheat on Thursday, um, and she had talked about you know various things that they are offering and uh, same thing with the clinton senior center um, some of them are doing um, kind of information sessions about how to use different like internet applications like zoom or facetime things along those lines um, how to get used to using technology for certain things um, the clinton senior center i know is doing virtual bingo through zoom mm. uh, and they're doing other different things through like facebook live zoom um, so again, it's just something to think about. Um, I was- So which would be the chicken and which the egg in this case? Would we first want to put up something to train people in being able to use those formats or to just start the program off and then simultaneously try to help people be able to connect with that who are, are not tech savvy at this point? I think that it could go either way, depending on what the council would want to do. Um, we could always beta test a program and see if people can log on and try it. And if for any reason they can't, then we know to bump up like an information session, or we could do information sessions and then try to then have a, a program, you know, up and running virtually. Has Clinton done anything of that sort? Address that issue? That they have a learning curve. I mean, they have an IT guy who is actually doing some um, who's actually doing some classes with their residents. Some of them are one on one, but some of them seems to be are bigger and they are kind of talking about, you know, using different applications. Um, so it is something we could try to do, um, you know, again, just to help prepare everybody in case, you know, I think it's a great idea because yeah. I, I, I to have the information there or to have the programs available, but 
people to feel uncomfortable about somehow connecting with them would seem a shame. It's there. They don't feel comfortable going to in-person sessions like us, for instance. And so knowing how to uh, log in, which is why I was told when it's like, uh, is useful to have people comfortable with those systems. So I think that's that concept of making available information. Well, let me see. How do they tune in the sessions and tell them how to tune in? I was thinking we could start things on cable access. Ah, there you go. Just to stream it at first, definitely. And it's always a good resource. I mean, we could wind up putting stuff up on our website later on, but I think to start the cable access would definitely be the way to go. Yeah. Sounds good. Any other board members got some thoughts on that or input or ideas or stuff up your sleeve? I see you're all wearing short sleeves, so never mind that part, but who has <laughs> ideas? Was there anything that the town already had put together to help the you know, town workers adjust to all of this at the beginning or no? Like I'm wondering if the chief who is our IT guy as I understand it, <laughs> <laughs> put together some small tutorial that was shared that maybe we could utilize. Unfortunately, we had to fly by the seat of our pants at the beginning. There was no time to prepare, to prepare tutorials. We, uh, we um, did the best we could just winging it. We signed up for Zoom and we were doing crash courses. That said, Zoom itself has tutorials. So if you're talking about doing something um, you know, uh, educating on Zoom, you'd probably be able to pull some information right off of that site uh, to be able to do some education. Mm -hmm. um, this is the thing, though, with Zoom. I mean, this is one of the benefits of Zoom. I, I personally uh, prefer in-person meetings always, but um, what we've found with Zoom is that things like what Victoria, what Victoria is suggesting we can actually do these. We can do pr public service announcements. We actually now have the technology that we need to be able to put out educational programs. Victoria could do some sort of an educational program or line up somebody to instruct someone, and we could put it right up on um, the Berlin Cable Access channel. We could just upload the video that we're you know, preparing here and put it up on TV. So unfortunately, Kate, to answer your question, we don't have tutorials um, prepared, um, but we may be able to um, know where to find them to put something together. Okay. Well, and to um, someone's point earlier, forgive me, but YouTube probably has a number of videos that we could um, sure. preview and then post if they were appropriate. Yeah, and even too, if we found, um, like full uh, descriptions of certain things too. I mean, that's something that could theoretically even go into the powderhouse news, um, mm -hmm. you know, different alerts that we're gonna be doing certain programs or things like that. Um, that may be something for the newspaper as well. Yeah, the town website as well as the powderhouse news. Well, the only Achilles heel of the powderhouse news is that it only comes out every two months. So there's some lag. I mean, if you were really looking to get a program up and running the next Powderhouse News is now out for a month or more. But I'm wondering if uh, Mass, Mass Council on Aging uh, may have some information relative to this. Hmm. They do have some tutorials on their website. They talk, a lot of it though is geared towards councils about how to do these things. With how to do councils, yeah. Yeah, how to have these programs kind of engage with your seniors. Like there was one about using Facebook Live to, you know, get your, you know, get seniors opinions on things and how to use Zoom. But it was again for like a meeting like this. Um, I mean, I can certainly go back in and dig. It's been about two weeks now since I was looking, but I can certainly, you know, if I find anything, certainly send it to you all and see what you think. Terrific. Something else too, just to keep in mind, um, is if you guys wanted to have people come in to kind of do information se sessions that we send out to the seniors, like if we have, for example, somebody from the like Neshoba Board of Health come in and talk about flu season with COVID, or talk about you know shine a shine counselor coming in talking about you know uh, Medicare benefits and health insurance 
and open enrollment in general, uh, things like that. Um, I know some of the other um, organizations and the other councils on aging, it sounds like are trying to set up similar things. So just let me know if that's something you guys would like to do as well. Yeah, we might, it, it might actually be uh, some economy of scale of joining with other COAs in the area if they have a shine training session or any of those things because the shine training sessions seem to come up at least annually, if not more frequently. Mm -hmm. All right, um, any more on that issue of things that we might do program-wise, offering-wise, in addition to the van, when our next ice cream social is, or no? Okay. Oh, I want to. I, I I want to uh, me just mention not that this is um, not that this is uh, set in so stone, but the town has sent our legislators a um, funding request. We uh, we just did this this morning um, <clears throat> to do to make improvements to the town owned courts um, adjacent to the school on South Street. Uh, the basketball court um, and tennis courts are in very very poor. Uh, condition. So we have asked our legislature to our legislators um, to advocate for funding to upgrade those. And part of the upgrade of those would be the idea of maybe establishing pickleball, um, which I know is kind of a big uh, activity that's popular um, with seniors. So we mentioned that mm -hmm. in our request for funding. So I just wanted to put it out there, let you know um, that that has been submitted to our legislators. I know I'd love to learn how to play pickleball. Okay, I actually okay. have, I actually have a brother-in-law who's a, a tennis whiz and instructed in <clears throat> Westboro, and he he took up pickleball. He was super sore around the midsection because of all of the bending over and jumping up and down and running around that you do in pickleball. It kind of surprised me that he'd be so. Just just a word a word to the wise that uh, yeah, you might want to jump into it slowly. It's. Uh, I'm going to have to Google it. I've never there. heard of it. <laughs> I've got to Google it. <laughs> yeah. Well, the other thing that apparently is popular, and I don't think just with Italians, is uh, bocce, which is like bowling yeah. on the lawn. Yeah. And then, of course, there's polo, since we're a horse. No, never mind. That's probably. <laughs> the horses are expensive. Um, what do we have on this? Other senior, let's see, did we do five? Five was virtual program offerings. Yes, information sessions. I believe we've covered that. Is there any other input to be made on that? Then item six is other senior community support. Uh, surveying seniors for COA needs. Um, I don't know if, if, Laurie, you will remember that our Powderhouse News in that we're trying to start a uh, asking the senior community members what they think on a different number of subjects on a variety of subjects hearing their input um, i don't know if we've received any feedback yet and i'm wondering how we might go about prodding the seniors to make some input hmm. i and maybe post it again and uh in there and uh ask them to email there questions or ideas? Hmm. <laughs> yeah, I was sort of hoping that we'd have a different question each month, but I mean, if we run the same, uh, hmm. Okay. Well, it's similar, I guess it's similar to surveys and, and everyone told me often that surveys don't work because people don't respond or they don't respond in sufficient numbers that you get an accurate sense of what people want or are thinking. I must be some way to do that. I mean, we did do the phone calls to theoretically to all the seniors in town, but had about a, I think a 40% hit rate. But uh, Victoria's expressed interest in contacting, keeping contact with seniors because she's very interested in senior mental health issues. And the more people are cooped up with COVID issues, the more likely it is that people are eventually going to get depressed staying indoors and not being able to see their uh, hug their next of kin and all this sort of thing. So uh, being in oh. touch 
is a, is something. And uh, Victoria, maybe you want to weigh in on what your concept is in uh, contacting and eliciting this information from seniors. Yeah, my thanks, Bob. My thought was what we could do is I know that you guys had worked earlier in the year to just reach out to all the seniors that were home and just ch check in with them and kind of follow up with that. Maybe reach out to seniors if they wanted to contact. Obviously, not make people talk to us, but. Maybe like once a month, just do a check in with everybody, just see how they're doing, see if they need anything and just see at that point if there's anything that the Council on Aging could do to help better meet their needs that we're not already doing at that point, maybe get suggestions and we can report that back um, to make potential changes as needed. Just another idea might be um, 19 Carter, I noticed is have people there every now and then maybe put some surveys down there and see if Evie could help uh, people fill them out or yep. have, have them pass them around. They're meeting just outdoors now. Their board has decided yep. not to do any indoor activities um, at the, yet. And who knows how this goofy COVID bugger is going to impact our lives going forward and even in the near future because it seems like it's ramping back up, which is what some people have predicted. Other people said, oh, no, that will never happen. And we're not even into the point where the thought was that it might ramp up substantially as fall approached and fall is approaching. So there's a lot of unknown stuff there about when we'll be back inside and uh, meeting, which is why this whole concept about getting people comfortable with tuning in information and getting cable up and joined with us in getting information available, but also contacting people. Now, when we do that, we had 30, 30 or 31 volunteers phoning before. Um, I know I've mentioned this before and don't want to bore anyone with the details, but I think Lancaster said at one point, maybe now even, they have 130 volunteers who uh, work in various capacities and in various programs to be in touch with seniors, help them as needed, uh, answer questions, provide stuff. So I think one thing we certainly need to do um, is to increase the number of volunteers we have working with Berlin Council on Aging to uh, provide services and find out what service, or even more so, find out what services people want or need. Um, I don't know who has some ideas on that about, you know, contact 19 Carter, posting information on the town website, whatever. Um, we need more volunteers and I'm not sure the definite could, path toward this, that goal. This could be something that the cable access may actually be able to help us with too, is if we advertise that we're looking for help just to, you know, do a check-in program with our seniors. Um, you know, I've had a couple people ask, you know, if we're doing anything or we need any help. So, I mean, there is, there is people out there who do want to help out. Just, I think, uh, Bob, as you've mentioned, just getting enough people to help us do this is just, it, it'll be a challenge, but I think it's doable. Yeah, that's good. Uh, and the other component of that is that most, not most, I, yeah, I think most councils on aging have the council on aging support group. And that also entails volunteers who help raise funds for council activities. And we haven't quite got there yet. We were talking with the Berlin seniors and uh, I think my sense is, this, I'm getting a little off topic here, or maybe I'm not. Um, my sense is with them that they are already providing a service and they, my sense is that they feel comfortable with the level of, act, of service that they're providing at this point and that they are not particularly interested in segueing into becoming a fundraising group for Council on Aging. I think they also have sort of, uh, how to say it, they, they enjoy the ownership of creativity in bringing up programs. And that, of course, that's another thing that occurs, I guess, broadly with volunteers is you want to make them feel they're not just uh, candle pins in the alley, but that they're actually being creative and that their creativity is being recognized and that they're, 
they're doing, but being appreciated for their doing and being allowed to create. Mm -hmm. I think that's a tricky thing to be able to make happen. All right, so each of you is responsible for gathering 50 volunteers and bringing them with you to the next meeting. But do get the word out uh, among people you know. Um, I have heard people in town say that they're retired now, that the husband and wife would like to volunteer in whatever capacity to help. Evie Duack certainly knows how to recruit volunteers because she's done that very ably at 19 Carter. And uh, a large part of it is also making them feel important and appreciated. Um, 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 item six, item, oh, what have we got? Oh, do donating unused items from last year's collection, Christmas collection that uh, our last COA, excuse me, I'm chasing a cat off the table. The last uh, COA director had. Um, so there still is a bunch of winter blanket, glove, cap, etc., material yes. uh, in the basement, in the COA space. Yep, we have toiletries, some toiletries as well, like combs, brushes, toothbrushes, things of that nature. I did check in with Wheat when I was there on Thursday, and they're actually doing basically like little toiletry kits for everybody who comes in to use um, yep. to get their services. Um, it would be something, again, I told them it would be up to the council. I mean, we could theoretically ask the residents if there was any of the stuff that they wanted, wait like 30 days, and then if they didn't want something, we could donate it. It's whatever you guys would feel comfortable with. Peggy, when when this when this was done this past year, though, didn't we ask? I think we asked someplace. I believe we asked in the Powderhouse News if people wanted anything. Very few people were raising their hands saying they wanted it, which is why so much is left there. We did distribute. I know I've taken around about six. I think I took around six, maybe, of those packages. And at least two of the people said, well, we don't really need it. Um, and I said, well, it's sitting there. It's going to go someplace. And, oh, okay, we'll take it. But I, I, I'd love it if we could find somebody who actually needs it, whether in this town or someplace else. I think somebody told me because the food pantry was, was taking surplus food to the vet's shelter in Worcester that they've stopped accepting stuff now. Maybe it's a COVID-related concern. So I'm wondering, I guess we just would find out by asking, but uh, my suspicion would be that they'd be jumpy about accepting anything, practically, um, unless they've seen it nuked or something, so they know it has no bad stuff on it. I but, thought there uh, was talk last year of when the seniors really didn't bite on a lot of that stuff and we had the surplus. I thought she did extend it to a veterans group locally but I don't, maybe I'm not remembering that right, but something about the vets is familiar to me too. I think they brought all of the, uh, <clears throat> the uh, perishable products. Over. Yes, Yeah. correct. But not any of the combs and other stuff? Mm -hmm. No? Mm -hmm. kind of stuff. No, I mean, there's no harm in asking again. I mean, and maybe it doesn't have to be the Worcester Vets mm -hmm. Center, there's, there's another one that houses or espouses the houses vets uh, somewhere in the area. I think part of the problem was by the time we realized that you couldn't get rid of them, the winter was over and most of those supplies were winter type supplies. So That's true. What's we save them for next winter, maybe we can give them away next winter. So Yeah, we'd also <laughs> talked about uh, we'd also talked about connecting with the uh, um, what is it, the clothing shop in First Church's building that used to be oh, a thrift shop there? Thrift shop. <clears throat> and I only take clothing, they don't take like blankets and stuff like that. Yeah. Okay, so that just, I mean, it's doing no good sitting in there, and I'm sure Victoria would like to have more space on the floor than uh, piles of things. Um, so that's something we need to explore, I guess, is that we can each search around and see what we find and calling people and seeing 
if churches or other groups are, are in places like Clinton that probably have more folks of a, in the low income bracket, um, see if they are interested in using some of that. Would there be objection to offering it through area councils on aging or wheat or any of those groups? No. no. Just no. so it gets in the hands of people who, who need it and mm -hmm. use it. Laurie, since you're right there on the screen, I have to note that string dispenser thing hanging on the on your window up there behind you is exactly like one that came out of, I think, my grandparents' house. That's pretty cool. I think that's a string thing. The ball of string goes in it, and you pull it through the sides. Oh, I thought it was uh, for a pot of flowers or something. <laughs> maybe. Or maybe it's a basketball hoop for small people. All right. Now I'll get a look. Yeah. All right. Pickleball grade. Was, was I getting off message? Yes. Um, anything else on that? Farmers market coupons. Uh, they've yeah, it definitely looks like the string thing. Yes, absolutely. Oh, interesting. And, and the one the one I had had a um, there was a top that went on it, and then the ball of string sat in it, and the string just came out through uh -huh. the uh, holes on the side. Okay. Or flowers, or small pumpkins, whatever you like to put in there. <laughs> um, farmers market coupons. If, if you talk with area COAs, uh, Victoria will probably find that they've been putting those out. I don't know if that's, yeah, it isn't just through wheat. Do you recall, Peggy, how farmers market coupons came to be? I know that. Uh, Holly used to go and pick them up in Fitchburg. In Pittsburgh, from who? Massachusetts. Uh, I'm not quite sure where, but they, you know, there were a few people who did request them, and she, she got rid of all of them that she had. So I know that. And were these? So where did the food for those come from? I I, I would imagine it had to be a, a, a farmers market in Pittsburgh. Okay. There's also a food program, I want to say it runs out of Devon's, and not Alex, but Alex, and I've got her name someplace. I'll, I'll be in touch with you, Victoria, about that. Runs a, a food supplement program. In fact, they were the ones, she was the one who was uh, orchestrating distribution of this federal frozen chicken and mozzarella and all the other stuff that was recently, whatever the heck it was. Um, some of which we use, but a lot of which we decided, even the food pantry decided they couldn't really, no, food pantry did distribute quite a bit. That's what the two freezers were in the uh, COA room in the basement there. So they did move quite a bit of that stuff. And for some reason, these programs just all of a sudden, boing, there they are. But um, I will check on farmer's market certificates and see if that's something that they can help us access. That'd be a good thing to be able to offer through the food pantry or whatever. Um, powder House News. So the next one is the September, October issue. Laurie, when reasonably should we have that stuff in? I would need to have everything by mid-August. Okay if you want to get it out first of September. Okay. So we need material and that's, uh, that's on all of us to come up with things or suggestions of things that ought to be included in there. We had the article in the last one about uh, renter's insurance that I thought uh, uh, Wayne Tex Texera did a good job on. And it was certainly apropos to the situation that the folks in Northbrook too faced. They would have, those who got bounced because of the uh, damage would have, those who didn't have it, I think would have fared a whole lot better. Uh, but other articles of that or a similar nature, certainly I think it behooves us to have that useful kind of information in there in every issue. In I'm addition gonna, to, 
something I saw that I thought was really interesting is that apparently now banks are asking people to cash in their piggy banks and distribute coins because there's a national shortage. I thought that was really interesting. Of coins, who knew? I've heard that too, yeah. So that could be something we put in there. This is okay. something interesting. I had a bunch of old coins and I turned them into Ephraims in Worcester, which is an antique place and was dealing with coins. I had a bunch of them left over from foreign travels. You know what they do with those? They took them to be melted. <laughs> they're still, you know, they're still currency in the countries they came from, but who's going to go through a pile of, you know, lira and francs and uh, drachmas and all the other stuff? Unbelievable. Huh. Um, 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 so we have articles to think about and submit to Laurie. Um, public service ones. Um, introductions, we've been introducing all the members of the COA. We haven't started, but should, I think. It would make sense on introducing uh, Margaret, introducing the fire chief, the police chief, uh, health board people, so on and so forth, so people know who their town um, movers and shakers are in the various departments in town. Okay. Anybody uh, thoughts on we that? We haven't done you yet, Bob. Yeah, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> publicity shy, you know. That doesn't that doesn't bother me, but it would be good to start getting information on out there for people so they know who's running the town and making life good for them. So Margaret, Peggy's, you're on, Peggy's, you're on, Peggy's, Margaret, also, you need, Peggy's yeah. also been very involved. It'd be nice to do one on Peggy. You know what? Okay, Peggy. Not happening. Ah, ah. <laughs> Can we write it on your behalf? We're going to have to have John sneak up on you with an iPhone or iPhone camera and take a that. picture. No, he won't do that. <laughs> so, Margaret, we need a little bio and we need a, a photograph, and uh, that can certainly be in the next issue. As, and I'm sure we can twist uh, both chiefs' arms and <laughs> other folks. Maybe another idea would be the van drivers. Uh-huh, the van yeah. service, the van driver. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay, that's not a bad idea. Yeah, because we should put out information on protocols for van use. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And with it, the drivers, so they know they're not being kidnapped by uh, federal agents sent to Portland. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We could even do um, just kind of like local community um, organizations too, because I know a lot of them had closed down during COVID. You know yep. now that services have reopened. You know what are they op like? What are they offering now that right. you know, they're fully functional again? Yeah, yeah. that's excellent. Yeah, um, and through the chair, um, the 1870 town mm -hmm. hall is very slowly reopening too. So um, Lisa, our new 1870 town hall manager, is starting to think about. Um, programs that might be appropriate during the COVID reopening. So maybe there's something that she could offer too as a little piece in the newsletter. Yeah, she sent me actually the, um, the rental list. If, if you're this kind of group or that kind of group and renting this room or that room, so the fees available mm -hmm. or charged for various spaces within it. So that's an interesting thing we could put in as well. Maybe so, a little bio on her as well. Okay. Yeah. So we're going to have a 16-page issue on the next uh, files. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> could be worse. Could be worse. Yeah. Maybe maybe files. Maybe files would be a, a you know uh, a a uh, what do you call it supporting advertiser. So we could have files by files. <laughs> maybe not. Mm. All right. Um, any other matters to discuss? Just a couple of quick updates for you all. Um, our M, our the Massachusetts Council on Aging sent us a letter earlier, uh, about last week, about the dues for the Council on Aging. So the good news is that they apparently got funding through EOEA, so we owe no dues this year. Uh, can you decipher EOEA? Executive Office of Elder Affairs. There you go. Okay. So we. We now have $265 to play with, guys. Oh. 
Wow. Oh, yeah. Cup nice. holders, cup holders in the van. That's no, whatever. <laughs> it's good, good to know, however. A couple other things to think about just to get your opinions on. Um, sure. Question that we're bumping into in terms of the van service is um, how do we want to arrange rides? Um, I know medical appointments are obviously going to take priority. And at this point, I, I guess we're trying to really limit it to the necessity trips like the grocery stores, pharmacies, things of that nature. Um, I know that there's been a couple calls that we've been getting for some like longer tripped medical appointments, but they're starting before 8 a.m. or they may be going past 2 p.m. Is the board, you know, is the council okay with that? And also to how do you want to kind of chunk up the schedules? So like do we, for example, want to do like, um, like the grocery stores, like a 90 minute chunks or like the pharmacies in like 75 minute chunks. So we know, um, you know, so the drivers know when they're going to be having their runs, you know, exactly how much time to budget. So we're not leaving somebody high and dry. Yeah, I think scheduling that I've seen, uh, at least in Clinton, and I am not sure I've seen somebody else's, but they outline Wednesdays, we go to whatever uh this this town for this and this and thursdays are our runs to worcester for medical appointments and so forth so when people when the people are talking with their doctors and they're saying okay we want to schedule you for xyz they can say well uh, i can get transportation in my town on thursdays so instead of us having to say uh, geez we'd like to take you to worcester but we already are committed to doing thus and such I think outlining, having a policy where we say this happens on Monday and this happens on Thursday regularly and people can kind of plan the, their use of the van around that. We also have the deal though with the van now that we're not taking more than two people on it at a time. Unless we uh, attach a trailer and run one person in the trailer. But. But if somebody's medical appointment doesn't coincide though with our schedule, yeah. like somebody, you know, clinics only see certain days or this type of appointment, and then if it doesn't match up at all, even if they have plenty of heads up. Yeah, I have uh, a doctor only has office hours on Thursdays. I have yeah. Yeah. And that's uh, what we're running into. Um, we have somebody who's needing dialysis treatments Monday, Wednesday, Fridays. And then I just got a call this morning for somebody requesting transportation for chemo rides. Um, on either Tuesdays or Thursdays. So again, like these are people who could be left for their treatments, but we would have to make sure that the drivers would be back ready to get them, you know, to bring them home as soon as their treatments were over. So I think it's just going to be just making sure that we budget enough time, you know, for the drivers to get to get back to to needing these medical appointments as well. And, and where were the where were the requesters services being provided in? I believe dialysis was in Worcester, <clears throat> and then the chemo treatments were at Emerson. Dialysis, dialysis in Marlboro. Marlboro Island. Okay, so you got Worcester and Marlboro, so that's not. And then well, Worcester's a twenty-minute run for Emerson. So I think Concord's going to be about thirty-five minutes with no traffic. Mm -hmm. huh. That's possible. Yeah, let's see. Yeah, well, depends on how fast they drive. <laughs> um, we're probably, let's see. Yeah, that's probably about right. That's probably about right. Because you have to pull into the receiving area anyway, and so forth. Yeah. But scheduling is really tricky because then, you know, is the person going to be there for four hours or five hours? And then are you, therefore able to schedule something else between then and then or another medical run or as uh, Kate was saying I suppose it's not practical to say we'll only do medical runs on Monday and Wednesday or something and then what happens if somebody absolutely they cannot do that they have to be in some other well you said Monday Wednesday Friday for uh, for which dialysis Yes, the dialysis uh, would be Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and then the call I got earlier was about um, chemo treatments that chemo. they could get it either Monday or Tuesday. It looks like, but then if you know if you have multiple appointments of yep. 
I need like these two at the same time, then it's, you know, who do you prioritize? So Ooh. Yeah. that's where we're running into. Wow. As it, it was, if there was a problem like that in the past, we, the, you would give the information to the driver and she would decide how to get them each to their appointment at the right time. Okay. One person may have to go an hour early in order to get the other one there on time. Right. Or they may have to wait almost a half hour, an hour afterwards to be picked up, but they always try to avoid that. They have to cook. And the other, the other thing that's come up, and uh, and it, it ties in with this, is um, regionalizing, where another town, Clinton, whatever, Lancaster, Boylston, whatever, uh, they have their own vehicles. In case of Clinton, they have two or three. And is it possible that we can schedule? work with them for their van if it's going to Worcester to take somebody to medical appointments in Worcester one of our off days to agree to stop here and pick up our person to take that person to Worcester and vice versa if we're going on Monday Wednesday Friday and they don't typically do that to Worcester then could we take one of their people on the same run I can certainly reach out to you know neighboring COAs if that's something that you all would want me to do and just run it past them. I think it's worth exploring. I mean, so you don't get into a, we can only do this, these two things because that's, we've got one van and you know, the times don't work out, but it might if we share the times and uh, rise with other towns. Okay. Laurie, will, you look like you're about to say something. Yeah, Laurie, will there? The AMT. Yeah. yeah, will there be extra masks, you know, like the medical type ones on the van in case someone forgets their mask? Yes. So we have a cooler full of PPE supplies, Lori, um, including oh, masks, gloves. Um, we have the wipes. We have disinfectant spray. Um, Chief Clark is going to be providing us some kits as well that are basically for like head gowns, booties, and um, gowns just in case there's like a, like a blood spill or like vomit, something like that to, yep. again, just to make sure we keep everybody as safe as possible. We do have a thermometer um, and we can easily order more PPE whenever we need it. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. If I, if I could, if I could add, um, uh, Victoria is, is spot on. Uh, we actually, the town received money through, money through the coronavirus relief fund to be able to buy protective equipment um, for the town, for the van service. So we're going to be able to replenish these supplies as we Excellent, excellent. If there's anything else that you guys think we're gonna need for the van, um, we do have the defibrillator, we have the fire extinguisher, we have the first aid kit. If there's anything that you guys think that we will also need, just let me know. Um, Laurie, do you have any thoughts on that subject since you were uh, EMT on uh, Ambulance for 17 years. Yeah, well, I just being have make sure everyone takes the AED and CPR classes. Those are very important. Yeah. 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 Should we expand that beyond the? You mean you, the people who are driving the van? Yes, definitely. Yeah. Actually, okay. Victoria, you know how you mentioned um, we could join when it was scheduled for today. Uh, is it too late to possibly join for when it's rescheduled? Yeah, no, that's totally fine, Kate. At this point, it is tentatively scheduled for next Tuesday at three o'clock. Um, Chief Clark's um, person who's gonna be doing the training said that he can get here for three. We were originally thinking earlier, like earlier afternoon. So I just have a call to one of the drivers just to confirm, um, but I think that they both can come. So we should be good to go. So whoever, I. Chief Clark said, I think about eight people is the max. So if anybody wants to come, just let me know. And I'll get I would, I'd like to be in it if I can, if I'm not uh, busy at that time. Okay. I would too. As soon as I get a firm time, I will make sure that you all know. All right. Great. All right. Anybody have any other matters to discuss? Questions, answers?
Victoria just, has a thought coming out of her. Just a heads up, um, Wheat is offering a, to trial, and again, up to you guys if you want to take them up on it. Uh, they're cooking hot meals for lunch and for dinner for the Clinton residents, and they're also working with Lancaster and Bolton. They are willing to do a beta test of doing this with Northbrook Village and also, you know, um, wanting us to let, you know, let our seniors know that, you know, they are open to doing whatever they need for the town of Clinton, uh, town of Berlin. So just throwing that out there. And how do those, so how would the meals reach people in Northbrook? They would be willing to drive. Wow. That is, she didn't, um, Jody was mentioning that she didn't want to be driving to everybody in Berlin if people weren't going to be interested in it. But yeah. they were willing to beta test doing Northbrook Village because they figured that enough people, you know, in a concentrated area may be interested to try it. Yeah, our Meals on Wheels right now, deliveries are down to four individuals, one of whom is in Northbrook Village. Mm -hmm. um, at one point we had six or seven, but uh, at this point it's down to four. So I assume that would be the, what is that? Somebody doing a cha-cha thing with a castanets there? What was that clicky sound? No it must have been me. I was turning down my volume. Oh. <laughs> I didn't know anybody could hear that. Truth <laughs> loud. Okay. All right. So that, um, let me see then. Just on that last issue, how do we... How would we assess who would like to receive, and would it, would it be noon meals or evening meals? I believe that what they're doing is that the Meals on Wheels, it sounds like are going out during the afternoon. I think it's, at this point, I know they were originally doing uh, dinners, but they can, you know, again, uh, Jody's willing to work with us and what we think our, you know, our residents would need. So I'm sure if we get the response, I could talk to her and firm it up more. Okay, right now our Meals on Wheels deliveries are, are Monday and Wednesday mornings. So that's it. Well, let's explore it further and see. Could be it a good like out-of-house news program. thing, Lori. Yeah. Also, uh, but, it, but also, if it's just going um, to... Sorry. To talk about the meals for a minute, other people that live in private homes might also be interested in coming on board with that. Yeah, they, they were interested. It's not that she's not interested in working with everybody in Berlin, but I think the thought was get, you know, who would be the most concentrated potential amount of people to, yep. to participate. They are still open in person and people, if they have means or if they have somebody who can go with them or for them, you can pick up a box lunch for lunch and dinner. Like you, well, where would they go to pick this up? at wheat i can give you guys the address it's on okay high street right. in clinton yeah it's high street in clinton yeah yeah okay so that's worth exploring sounds good um anything else very well our next meeting date and time would be last thursday oh, whatever where's my thingy that i can check this with last Looks like the Tuesday, 25th. I'm sorry. 25th? Yes. Okay. So it'll be August 25th, Tuesday, August 25th at four. Mm -hmm. um, same time, same station, same table in your house. And um, four o'clock. All right. Do I hear a motion to adjourn this meeting? I'd like to make a motion to adjourn the meeting. I second. Yeah. Motion is made and seconded to adjourn the meeting. Kate Bliss? Aye. Lori Fairbay? Aye. Pat Wheeler? Aye. Karen Schultz? Aye. And Bob Blair? Aye. Um, of course, now that we've adjourned, um, it occurs to me one thing we didn't discuss that we need to act on is uh, filling the other two vacancies on the board of directors. There are two vacancies now, and we've heard from two people who would like to serve on it, so we need to get out in the application form to them. Excellent. And if you know, if you know other people, shoo them our way. All right. Thank you all very much.